Today I'm going to be talking about hard proofing, which is when we print a physical print and then look at it and then make changes based on that print. Now I always recommend to do a combination of soft proofing and hard proofing to get the perfect result. Now hard proofing, as I said, is the very basic procedure of printing the print, looking at it and making alterations based on that print. Now the issues come with hard proofing. The main issue, should I say, is the cost. We could run off 10 proofs before you get to an acceptable image that you want to print. Now hopefully not, that's worst case scenario. Hopefully you might print one and just think, oh yeah, I just need to do this. And then it comes out perfectly. However, for that tricky image, you may be going down that route of printing a lot off. So I'm going, to tell, I'm going to show you a little technique that I use. It's a technique of putting multiple images with different adjustments made to them on one sheet of paper. So the first thing we need to do is open up the image we're going to be printing and make some basic adjustments to this image and edit it. Now I've got this picture of this landscape up here. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new page, a new document. So I'm going to select A3 and I'm going to select portrait in here and I'm just going to create a white page, a white blank page in here. So first thing I'm going to do is I need a control image to start with. So I've got this image here and I'm just going to drag it using the move tool into this document here. As you can see it's absolutely huge. So I just need to make that a bit smaller. So I'm going to use the transform tool to do that. So I go to edit then transform and then scale and I'm just basically just going to drag it quite crudely as I said this is a proof really so we don't need to be massively accurate but we need to be accurate enough. Now underneath I am going to write control just using the text tool hopefully I've spelled it right there we go and I'm just going to put it in there. The next thing we need to do is to print this so I'm just going to go file print and I'm going to be printing on PF Luster today so I need to go into print settings I've got A3 selected into my print settings here so I've got Epson premium semi-gloss perfect just check that one lovely and then PF luster and then the next thing I'm going to do is just click print so that sheet is printed out and as you can see it has created a picture up in the top left here and now what we need to do is just look at this image and just think what do we need to do to improve this I can see immediately that in the trees here there was a bit of a blocking effect going on, the shadows are blocking. We've lost a little bit of detail in the valley in here and also it's just not popping as much as I'd like. So first of all I want to address this shadow detail and the important thing is we do this in steps and in stages so we can see the progression as we're going down the page. So let's do that shadow detail first. So I'm going to do this by a layer adjustment. I'm going to do this because then I can turn it on and off if I, if I need, if I want to apply it, and if I need to apply it. So we're going to do that by selecting the background layer. And then at the bottom in the layers tab, there's a little circle with a white and a black half and half in there. It says create a new fill or adjustment layer. So I'm just going to click that and then I'm going to click curves in here. Now I just want to bring these blacks up a little bit so we're not blocking but I also want to just keep that detail in there as well in the highlights as well so I'm just going to bring that down a little bit so I've got a little bit of a curve in there and that is all I'm going to do for this adjustment now what I need to do is just to select both of these layers and then select the move tool and now I'm just going to copy this into my control in here and I'm just going to make sure that when I bring these in the curves adjustment and the layer 2 just underneath the control layer because otherwise the adjustment layer will start to affect affect this image as well so I'm just going to make this 
the right size just by using the transform tool again. Just do this quite roughly, there we are. And just click enter to save those. And you can see there is a difference now between those two, quite a big difference. So that's great. So let me just put this in here and I'm just gonna write curve adjustment. Now, before we go ahead and print this second image, there's one thing we need to do. you notice we have both images now appearing on the page when we go to the print. But we don't want to reprint this control image again because it would just create a, an inky mess on the page effectively. So I'm just going to click cancel. And all we need to do is just turn off that layer in there. If you turn off the right one, it helps. There we are. I'm just going to turn off the writing as well. Now, when we go to print, we are just going to be printing that image there. Okay, so I'm just about to press print on this second image. Now, when I put the paper in, I'm going to put it in that way around. So the paper feeds through the printer with this control image going in first. So the next image will print there. So I'm just going to do that now and we'll get that printed. Okay. So I've just got that one printed and the shadow detail has come right back in there and it's as I would like it. It's not so muddy now in there. However, by doing that, a global adjustment to everything, we have lost the, the detail within this rock here, this mountain here. So I'd quite like to bring that back in. So we could either do that by selecting this area or masking it out or we can use the detail in here which I quite like we've got a kind of nice punchiness in here and the colour in here so I may just now go back into the software into Photoshop and just mask these areas out so it doesn't affect that area so I'm just going to do that now okay so I want to mask out some of this mountain in here and this rock so I get a bit more punch to it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the mask that the adjustment layer has already selected and I'm just going to select the brush tool and I'm going to select black. Now the black now the black is going to create basically a hole in the mask allow this to come through here so let's see now I want to just swap it to white which will paint back in as well so I've just caught things a little bit too much up here let me just select the layer mask again Select the mask. Okay. Just swap this by just hitting X you can as well just to switch between those colours, just get a little bit just caught a little bit of the edges in here. Okay. So now that's brought that rock back in a little bit for us. And we can start to do that also with some of the little peaks up here if we wanted to bring those back in. And when you just start to paint, to start to bring back in a few elements that we've lost by doing that adjustment. So now what we need to do is I'm going to create, copy these into the other file. But first, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy them over. To here and then I'm going to click the little folder down here which will pop them into a group as well and I can just call that masked so I know what it's going to be doing I'm just going to pop them in here as well and then if I go to transform I can then make this I mean you can see the difference between the two in here I'm just going to turn off everything else we've got in here and then I'm just going to put 
masked. But I'm going to do it in the correct colour of font. There we go. Now I'm just going to print that in exactly the same way. So the images go in first into the printer, so the sheet is upside down. And then we'll have a look and see how we're going. We may almost be there, but I think we may need to do a little bit to the sky. But we'll, we'll just have a look and see. Okay, so I've just printed off these last two images. I brought in the sky on this one, like I said I was going to. Just made it punch a little bit and put a little bit more colour in there. I did that by using a uh, layer mask and then adding just the colour in, increasing the vibrance and a little bit of levels adjustment in there as well. But I've also used a gradient on the layer mask as well, just to kind of grade that back in as well. Now the last thing I did was I added a sharpen layer on here. Now I used a, a high pass filter to add the sharpening on here. If you'd like to know how to do that please have a look at my other video I did on that as well on the YouTube channel. And just to finish off the image and just to make the details I wanted to be sharp really pin sharp. So now it's time to just do our final print. Okay. So here is the final print. I've put a nice like one inch board around it and done a pretty good job. From where we started at the top here in our control image, it's a bit murky and very blocked out in the shadows here and a bit of a dull sky. And we've gone through the stages of brightening the shadows, bringing back this rock here, adding a little bit of sky in, then just sharpening everything to make it really pop off the page for us. And that is the print we have here. So hard proofing can be really useful in that sense, in that way. And using this method as well can really help cut down the amount of paper you're gonna be using and actually um, getting more final prints out of it as well. So I hope that's been useful. And please always remember to give us a call or drop us an email if you have any questions about this. And please don't forget to have a look at my other tutorials on YouTube. Thanks very much. I'll see you next time.